Hi guys, my name is Melissa, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about square numbers and values of ones digits. And so square numbers are where the product of a whole number in itself. So square numbers are things like 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, and so on. And so it's really beneficial if you guys can memorize and really instantly recognize square numbers. So common square numbers like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, and so on. And so 1 times 1, we express it as 1 squared. 2 times 2 is 2 squared, and so on. And so if we put it in a diagrammatic form, a square number represents the area of a square. So for example, if we have a square, then all sides are equal, and the area of a square is side times side. And since the sides are going to be the same, if each side is a, then it's going to be a squared. So the area of a square is going to be a square number. And an important note is that the digit in the ones place of a square number can only be either 1, 4, 5, 6, 9, or 0. And numbers that end with 2, 3, 7, and 8 are not squares of any numbers. And um, but actually, when you guys solve math problems, it's rare that you guys look at the ends because as you solve more and more math problems, you guys will get more familiarized with square numbers and so you guys will be able to recognize them in an instant. And so, now we're going to look at example 1. And it says, list all the square numbers that are larger than 200 but smaller than 400. And so, a square number that is larger than 200, so a square number that's around 200 is going to be, um, if we try, 13 times 13 is going to be 169, and 14 times 14 is 196. So 196 is probably the closest we can get to 200. So we know that starting from 15 times 15, it's going to be larger than 200. And 400 is 20 times 20, so we know that it's going to be less than 20 times 20. And so 15 times 15 is going to be... ...225. And since we know that 20 times... Tw it, um, since we know that... The square number should be less than 20 times 20. We're going to try 19 times 19 to see if that is in range. And that is going to give us 361. So the square numbers that we have are going to be 15 times 15 to 19 times 19. So 15 times 15 is 225. 16 times 16 is going to be 256. And we have 17 times 17. Which is 289. And we have 18 times 18. which is 324, and then we have 19 times 19, which we said was 361. And so we're going to have five square numbers in between the range of 200 to 400, and they are going to be 225, 256, 289, 324, and 361. And now we're going to take a look at example 2. So it says, which of the following numbers are square numbers? 
And so now when we have problems like these, we can go back to the important note that the digit in the ones place of a square number can only be either one, four, five, six, nine, or zero. And so if we look at the ones digit, um, the ones digit is seven, so we can rule that out. Nine could be a possible square number. Eight, we can rule that out. And five could, and ending with the five, so this could be a possible square number. And so we're going to test whether 6,889 and 5,625 is a square number. And so we're going to make an estimate. So we know that 80 times 80, since 8 times 8 is 64, we know that 80 times 80, or 80 squared, is going to be 6,400. So this is approximately close to 6,889. So we're going to try numbers like 81 squared or 82 squared. So 81 times 81 is going to give us 6,561. So we know that it should, um, for 6,889 to be a square number, we're going to try a number that's bigger. So we're going to try 82 squared. So 82 times 82 is going to give us 6,724. So we're approaching the number, so we'll try 83 times 83, which is equal to 6,889. 6, and so 6,889 is 83 squared, or 83 times 83, so it is a square number. And then we're going to try 5,625. So the closest um, uh, estimate that we can make right away is 70 times 70. Since 7 times 7 is 49, 70, 70 times 70 is going to be 4,900. So we're going to try a number like 72 times 72. And that is going to give us 5,184. And the number we want to test is 5,625. So we're going to try a number like 74. So 74 squared is going to be 5,476. So we're going to try a larger number like 75. And that is going to give us 5,625. And so 5,625 is also a square number, and that is going to be 75 times 75. So both numbers are square numbers. Now we'll look at example 3. The product of a whole number, m, and 7,920 is a square number. Find the smallest possible value of m. So I'm using prime factorization, which is a strategy we used in the previous video. Um, we're going to do the prime factorization of 7,920. We'll do it here since we might run out of space. So we know that 7,920 can be expressed as 792 times 10. Now 10 can be expressed as 5 times 2. So we're going to stop there for that since both are prime numbers. And then for 792, we know that it's divisible by 9. 
because 7 plus 9 plus 2 is equal to 18, which is divisible by 9. So 792 divided by 9 is going to be 88. And so 9 is going to be 3 times 3, and both are prime numbers. So we're going to stop there. So the circles are just highlighting the prime numbers so that we don't forget to multiply any when we do the prime factorization. So when we write out the prime factorization, and 88 can be expressed as 8 times 11, and 8 can be expressed as 4 times 2, oh, and 11 is a prime number, and so 4 is going to be expressed as 2 times 2. So the prime factorization of 7920 is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 11. So we can write that as 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 2 times 5 times 11. And so it says, find the smallest possible value of m. And so the product of m and 7920 should be a square number. And so we have a balanced number of 2, since we have 4 of 2s, we have an even or balanced number. So we have identical pairs, and we also have an, a balanced pair for 3 as well, since we have 2 of 3s. But we're, we only have 1 of 5 and 1 of 11, so we should create pairs for 5 and 11 as well. So m should be 5 times 11, and so that will add 5 and 11 to the product of m and 7920. So if m is 5 times 11, then the product of 7920 and m is going, to be, is going to be 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 2 times 11 to the power of 2. So all of the factors will be balanced. And so the smallest possible value of m would be 55. Now we're going to look at um, values of the ones digit. And to find the value of the ones digit, it's important to observe how the ones digit changes with each multiplication. And so we have 5 to the power of 5, which is multiplying 5 5 times. And so, we're multiplying 5 5 times. And for 2 to the power of 8, we're multiplying 2 8 times. And the number written in the superscript is the number of times the number multiplies itself. That is what we call exponents. Now we're going to look at example 4. So A says 5 to the power of 10, and it says find the values of the 1's digits. So we're multiplying 5 10 times, and so the value of the 1's digit of 5 to the power of 10 is going to be 5. And this is because when we look at only the value of the 1's digit, 5 to the power of 1 is 5 times 1. Five um, times 1, since we're only multiplying it once. Well, it's, it's just going to be 5. So the 1 stitch is going to be 5. 5 to the power of 2 is 5 times 5. So the 1 stitch is going to be 5. And then 5 to the power of 3 is 5 times 5 times 5, which is going to be 25 times 5, and that would be 125. So the 1 stitch is going to be 5. 
And so the value of the ones digit of five to the power of 10 is also going to be five. Now, when we have eight to the power of 25, eight to the power of one would be eight. Eight to the power of two is gonna be 64. So the ones digit is gonna be four. And eight to the power of three is gonna be 64 times eight, which is gonna be 512. So the ones digit is gonna be two. Then multiplying that by eight again for eight to the power of four, it's gonna be 4096. So the ones digit is gonna be six. And when we multiply that again, the ones digit is gonna become eight and then four. So we can see that a pattern is observable for the ones digit when we have a power of eight. So the pattern is gonna be eight, four, two, six. And so the ones digit recurs in the following pattern of eight, four, two, and six. And since we have a power of 25, we're gonna divide 25 by four, and that gives us six and a remainder of one. So the value of the ones digit is gonna be the first term or first ones digit value of the pattern, which is going to be eight. So the ones digit of the value of the ones digit of eight to the power of 25 is gonna be eight. Now let's take a look at C. So C is nine to the power of 99. And so this is a misprint, it's a power of nine. And so nine to the power of one is nine. And nine to the power of two is 81, so the one digit is one. Nine to the power of three is going to be 81 times nine, which would be 729. So it ends with nine. And then when we multiply nine to that again, that's gonna give us 6,561. So the one digit would be one. And so we have a recurring pattern of nine and one for the values of the one digit. And so since the exponent is 99, we're gonna do 99 divided by two, since two is how many numbers we have in one cycle. So 99 divided by two is going to be 49 with the remainder of one. And so based on the remainder of one, the first term or first value in the cycle of two is gonna be nine. So we know that nine to the power of 99 is gonna end in nine. Now for four to the power of 1,999, now we're constantly gonna use this um, strategy of identifying patterns and cycles. And so four to the power of one is four. Four to the power of two is 16, so the ones digit is gonna be six. Four to the power of three is gonna be 16 times four, so it's gonna be 64. So the ones digit is four. And then four to the power of four has a an ones digit of six. So again, we see a recurring pattern of the ones digit ending in four and six. So we have two numbers in each cycle. And since the power is 1,999, we're gonna divide that by two. And that gives us 999 with the remainder of one. Now again, the remainder of one tells us that the value of the ones digit is gonna be the first term in the cycle, and the first term in the cycle is gonna be four. And so the ones digit of four to the power of 1,999 is gonna be four. Now we're gonna take a look at example five. <clears throat> so beginning from the ones digit, how many consecutive zeros are there in 625 times 64? So we're gonna multiply 625 and 64, but instead of multiplying both of them, we're gonna express them as um, exponents or multiplications, constant multiplications or products of the same number. So 625 is going to be five to the power of four, or five times five times five times five. 
and 64 is 8 to the power of 2, or 8 times 8. And if we want to use prime numbers, we know that 8 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the power of 3. And so this is going to be 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 3. So that is going to be 2 to the power of 6. So we know that 625 is 5 to the power of 4, and 64 is 2 to the power of 6. And so we have two numbers involved only, 2 and 5. And so if we do 2 times 5, that gives us 10. And so we have four pairs of 2 times 5 because we have four fives involved. And so we're going to have two twos remaining. But the number of pairs that we can make of 2 times 5 is going to be four pairs. So that would tell us that we're multiplying 10 four times. And of course, we do have 2 to the power of 2 remaining, but that's just going to tell us how many zeros we have, and so that tells us we have 4 consecutive zeros. So there are 4 consecutive zeros in 625 times 64. Now we're going to look at some practice problems to see if we understood the concepts correctly. And so first, we're going to test to see if it's possible for each of the following numbers to be a square number. And then we're going to find the smallest possible value of the number if it is a square number. And so we have a times b times 7. And so to see if it's possible for that to be a square number or not, we're going to look at we're going to look at um, seven first, <clears throat> and so oh, so it wasn't a times b times seven. I'm sorry, I thought it was a product, but this was just giving us the terms, like the number, as in it's telling us it's three digits. So you're not going to view this as a product, you guys. So it's not written as a product, it's just written as it is. So it's this is telling us that it's a three digit number ending in seven. But then based on what we learned in the previous pages, we know that a square number can never end in a seven. So we can say that AB, AB7 is never going to be a square number. And for MN8, no square number ends in the 8. So again, that's a no, just by looking at the 1's place. For XY5, a square number can end in a 5. And so now we're going to find the smallest possible square number of XY5. And so... Um, the smallest possible would be 15 times 15, which is 225. But then it says, but then we have x, y, 5, and since we know that x and y are different numbers, but then for 225, x and y are both 2. We know that 225 cannot be x, y, 5. And so we're now going to look for the next smallest number where the 1's digit is 5, and it's a 3-digit number. And so the next one is going to be 25 times 25, which is going to be 625. So x is going to be 6 and y is going to be 2. The number is going to be 625. And for a, b, 6, um, the ones place, the ones digit can be a 6 for a square number. And so the smallest is going to be 
196, and so A is going to be 1, and B is going to be 9. Now let's move on to the next page. So it says, which of the following are square numbers? And since these are basically repetitions of the same idea, we're only going to go over A and B. So for 2,209, um, we're first going to look at the ones digit and see if this number can be a square number or not. So since it ends with a 9, it can be a square number. And so since we know that 40 times 40 is 1,600, we're going to start from there. So since 2,209 isn't like too close to 1,600, we're going to try a number like 45 and 45. And that is going to give us 2,025. So next we're going to try a number like 47 times 47. And that is going to give us 2000, <clears throat> wait, for 47 times 47, I'm like, I think I miscalculated, so I'll try again. So we do get 2209, and so 2209 is. 47 squared or 47 times 47 so it is a square number now let's take a look at 3402 just by looking at the ones digit it ends with the two and no square number ends with the two so we can say that 3402 is not a square number and now we'll move on to the next page and so it says the digits 0 and 1 can occur in the 1's place of a square number, like 9 times 9 equals 81, and 10 times 10 equals 100. But then the digit 2 cannot occur in the 1's place of any square number. What other numbers can occur in the 1's place of a square number? So basically, if you guys have memorized from the first page, great job. But even if you still haven't, that's totally fine. So just get familiarized um, with those numbers. And so we just need to memorize that the numbers that can occur in the ones place is going to be 1, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 0. And um, instead of memorizing, you guys can also choose to memorize um, the first few square numbers. So 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 5 is 25, 6 times 6 is 36, 7 times 7 is 49, and 8 times 8 is 64, 9 times 9 is 81, and 10 times 10 is 100. So if you memorize those 10 um, square numbers, then you can find that the numbers that can be in the ones place are going to be 1, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 0. And now we're going to look at problem 4. So it says list all the square numbers that are larger than 300 but smaller than 500. So a square number that's closest to 300 is going to be 17 times 17, and that is going to be 289. And then from 18, the square of 18 is going to be 324. So we know that um, 
a square number that's larger than 300 is going to start from 18 times 18. And it's smaller than 500, so we're going to try to look for a square number that's closest to 500. And that is going to be about 22. So that is going to give us 484. But if we try to 23 times 23, that is going to give us 529. So that's over 500. So the maximum um, squ largest square number that's larger than 300 but less than 500 is going to be 22 times 22. So now we're going to compute all square numbers from 18 times 18 to 22 times 22. So we have 18. the square of 18 to the square of 22. And we already calculated the square of 18, so that was 324. And 22 times 22 was 484. And we know that 20 times 20 is 400, because 2 times 2 is 4. And so we're just going to calculate 19 squared, or 19 times 19. And so that is going to be 361. And 21 times 21 is going to be 461. So we, we're going to have five numbers between 300 and 500 that are square num perfect squares or square numbers. So that's gonna be, those are gonna be 324, 361, 400, 461, and 484. Now let's take a look at the next problem. And so now it says the product of 2100 and the whole number m is a square number. Find the smallest possible value of m. Now we're going to do the prime factorization of 2100. And we can write this as 21 times 100. And 100 can be written as 20 times 5. So 5 is a prime number. And 20 can be further broken down into 10 and 2. 10 and 2 is a prime number. And 10 can be broken down into 5 and 2. Now for 21, we know that 21 can be broken down into 3 times 7, and both are prime numbers. So, so far, 2100 can be expressed as 2 times 2 times 5 times 5, wait, 2 times 2 times 3 first, times 5 times 5, times 7. That's going to be 2 to the power of 2 times 3 times 5 to the power of 2 times 7. Now, since we want um, 2,100 times m to be a square number, we need to make sure that these prime factors have pairs. And so, 2 has a pair since it has an even number multiplied, so 2 is multiplied twice. 5 is multiplied twice as well, so it has its pair. But 3 is only multiplied once, and 7 is only multiplied once. So to find both of the numbers a pair, m must include 1, 3, and 1, 7. And since we're looking for the smallest possible value of m, the smallest possible value is going to be 21. Now let's take a look at the next problem. So it says, the product of David's grandfather's and David's father's age is 2,268. The product of his grandfather's, his father's, and David's ages is a square number. How old is each? So we're going to first perform the prime factorization of 2,268. And so we know that that's divisible by 2. So we're going to break it down into 2 times 1,134. Then we're going to break that down into 2 times 
567 And so 2 and 2, they're both prime numbers. And for 567, we know that 5 plus 6 plus 7 is 18, so it's going to be divisible by 9. So we can express that as 9 times 63. And 63 is 9 times 7. So 9 can be broken down into 3 and 3. So we can express 2,268 as 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Times 3 times 7. So that's going to be 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 4 times 7. And then we know that this number, which is the product of the grandfather and David's father ages, so this number times David's age, so I'll write that as D, is going to be a square number. So again, we're going to look for um, the pairing of the factors and so um, 7 is the only factor that's currently not paired so D is going to be 7 or either a 7 or a multiple of 7 And then if we assume that David's age is 7, then David's father's age is going to be 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, which is 4 times 9, so it's 36. And the grandfather's age is going to be um, 3 times 3 times 7, which is going to be 9 times 7, so he's going to be 63 years old. And so David is 7 years old, the father is 36 years old, and the grandfather would be 63 years old. And so that was it for our class today, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.